Uh, that, one. that one. Yeah. I feel like I'm a greaser or something. Like I should be <clears> like <throat> in, uh, well, Greece. <laughs> Uh, the movie. Or it, or it, Greece is in the frying pan. <laughs> I would rather not be in a frying pan. I like. It's it's strangely addicting. You go and you're like, I'm just gonna get one, and then it and it snowballs. That's because of what we put in the ink. Oh, okay. Need the fix. Let's yeah. On camera. <laughs> just a joke. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't mind me asking you questions and stuff? Not at all. Not at all. Yeah, we had this discussion over whether you could actually talk about the history of tattoos while you were tattooing or not. I'm good at answering questions. Um, starting a conversation, not so much. So. Okay. But as long as you kick my brain into gear. All right. From Working on your arm, I can do it. Oh, cool. How high or low would you like it? Um, probably about up to, to here. Well, you have this natural uh, Curve. part of your arm that dissect, bisects okay. it. So I would say either down here or up here. You know what, then go with up here. I think it'd fit better there because yeah. the top of the skull fits the top of your arm. Yeah. Now, a couple of these moles we won't be able to tattoo right. over. So there be might be some hollow spots okay. just for those. Well, the moles, it'll be a moly um, skull. skull. <laughs> Mole skull. All right. If I can get you to stand up, please. Sure. Relax your arm down nice and natural. Stand okay. up nice and straight. goes right through a couple of those moles. Let's move them okay. a little. Damn, my Heritage. Balls. Yeah. <laughs> sure there's probably people who don't have any. And then I'm sure there's people who have way, way more. Oh, yeah. I was actually not doing it on the other side because I have a scar from one that I had removed. Someday I'll have to figure out how to get that cool. get something over there, but all right, I'm gonna move it forward a little. Okay. Okay. That. That'll work. Okay, cool. How about that other one? Yep, I'll just pull that on the inside. Okay. Cool. Cool. You can just relax while I get everything else Sure. Set. And I'll ask you questions once we get your set. Oh, okay. Can you talk about what you're doing right now? Certainly. I'm setting up the, these are single use needles, um, a liner and a shader, and autoclaved uh, tubes that we scrub and reuse to hook them up to the machine. Looks pretty primitive with rubber bands and pieces of paper towel, but it works well and go with what works well. Now has the uh, technology for tattooing changed a lot over the years? There have been some new innovations like uh, pneumatic uh, machines and a lot of people are um, using rotary machines, which is the same as what people use in jail with the cassette decks. Okay. It's just a cam that spins around. Um, other than that, it's just been fine tuning for the coiled electric machines, refining geometry, 
uh, and all that stuff. Better, to better uh, needles. You used to have to make all your own needles. When did uh, the like first electronic tattoo machine come around, or about when? Uh, I think it was late 1800s. Samuel O'Reilly had the first patent. Okay. No, Thomas Edison had the first patent. Really? As an engraver, Samuel okay. O'Reilly had it patented for tattooing. Okay. I can't imagine Thomas Edison being the type to go and grab a tattoo. <laughs> you never know. You know. Under his three-piece suit, he could have been completely inked. We have uh, copies of all the patents for those up front. Oh, cool. Do I need to move anywhere? Or is nope, this good? you're good. Is this a good height yeah, for you? Yeah, this is perfect. Okay. I'm going to start slow to get you used to it again. Okay. Just need you nice and still. <laughs> you know the routine. Probably test to see how when that's going how loud it is in comparison to your voice okay it'll drop as it hits skin too. yeah as the needle plunges <laughs> in. Drops right down. Oh, okay. yeah. Not too bad, is it? No. Good. How's it sound for you, Kim? Okay. Okay. Um, so, why a tattoo museum? Early on, I had started collecting, and a lot of my friends had started collecting uh, tattoo memorabilia, historical stuff, cards, paintings, drawings, and things. and. When looking around, we figured it'd be a good way to give back and and show people where this all came from and why we do it this way. Why there are reasons why certain designs show up and stay true. Um, and what's the history of the museum itself? Uh, we opened in May of 99. And I've been going since then. Cool. Um, now, how far back, at least with, uh, I guess you say, this style of tattooing, does this go? How far back into our history? Uh, well, the original patent was the late 1800s, so I'm sure somebody started doing it before that without having it patented. Um, And, I mean, tattooing in general has been recorded since recorded history on people. The ice man that they found frozen in Australia, or Austria, had tattoos in places where were tr traditional acupuncture places. Wow. And when they uh, did a CAT scan or 
x-rayed or whatever his in insides, they found out that he was having stomach problems which were associated with those acupuncture points. Really? So tattooing goes back basically to the history, or to the history of mankind has been the history of tattoo. I would say since fire. Fire. Fire, wood, making carbon. You get okay. stuck with a burnt piece of stick and that leaves a mark under your skin. Wow. And um, I guess I could say American tattoos and Western tattoos are, are vastly different than other cultures. Uh, and since you have an extensive collection of tattoos that are, they seem, most of, a lot of them seem, I guess you could say American or, or That's, Western. That, well, our focus has been American electric tattooing. Okay. Because there is such a large amount of stuff out there for the entire history of tattooing. We just wanted to focus on American electric tattooing. Okay. Well, and you can see some of the Asian influence on a lot of it but is it um do you are you able to see when the asian influence came in like was it during um certain wars mm -hmm. that's exactly when when uh troops were going across the ocean and then seeing it and getting tattooed over there and then coming back and then tattooers would see the tattoos on the sailors coming back and they would copy them okay take tracings or uh, try to do a drawing from it because they like that design. And that's how a lot of these designs traveled around the world. Oh, so it's really like a melting pot almost and a grabbing of influences from wherever, I'm um, guessing, uh, at least for the beginning part, sailors went. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just discovered yesterday, uh, I found a picture on the internet of a cat necklace that was at is on display at the MoMA. Okay. And it's the same cat that we have a piece of flash done by Stony St. Clair as a tattoo. Wow. Wow. Now, this area, this is, is is in uh, Fell's Point. Mm -hmm. Is did you choose this because this was a former ship's port? It definitely helped. We looked in Federal Hill, um, and we looked over here. Um, I think the zoning, the zoning was definitely a factor in it also because we had to have tattooing as an accessory use if we were going to have it. Okay. So, just like some people have clothing stores and tattooing. Okay. We went the museum route. So it's a museum and tattoo. Yep. Okay. And you become the exhibit. Well, that's actually why I wanted to go with one of the uh, tattoos out of your uh, um, I guess you'd say exhibits. Um, mm -hmm. on, could you talk about the artist of the, the tattoo that you're doing a version of? It was, his name was Owen Jensen. I, I'm at a loss for all his details. <laughs> <laughs> um, he, a lot of his designs I've been going back to lately just because there's, they're very clean and you can tell what they are from across the room. And they're gonna hold up well. And the girls are pretty. <laughs> and um, what sort of, um, what the evolutions of tattoos? It's, it's kind of, um, I guess you could say more recently, in the last like 10 years, I've seen a lot of retro designs. Mm -hmm. um, but is there like an arc of where people kind of started with tattooing and with the electric age and you saw um, distinctive jumps in the styles? Uh, 
There are definitely certain artists who brought something different to it. Okay. Stony St. Clair being one of them, his designs were a little more wacky okay. than other people's. Um, another person would be uh, Carol Nightingale. He was a DC tattooer who wore a suit and a hat and was very proper and really and was also known for line dancing and <laughs> hopefully not while he was giving the tattoo nope i actually saw a picture on the internet and i didn't it didn't have a source but it was somebody dressed up nice giving a tattoo and there was another person sitting next to them there were three of them and all three of them were smoking while the tattoo was getting done <laughs> When I first started working, the guy I worked for would smoke while he tattooed. <laughs> That's, uh, well, I guess if you're, you're getting a tattoo and it was a little bit more acceptable a long time ago. You calling me old? No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> I mean, could you, um, there are some, I guess you could say some trope some some designs that show up again and again and again um like the skull horseshoes horseshoes the 13 um is there i guess you could say like reasoning behind them them uh i think the skull is just everybody has one it's just owning up to your your death or okay i mean everybody comes to the point of getting tattooed with a different story, a different line at this point. But some of the images were because of wars, like the a lot of uh, severed heads, Asian heads okay. during Vietnam. Wow, I didn't know that. That was popular. Um, some has been. Uh, Political, like a lot of there for a while. There are a lot of panthers being done. Why the panthers? Just being tough and standing out. Okay. I think in reminiscent of the Black Panthers. Okay. For some. Not everybody, but you know, like I said, it. You could do the same design on twenty different people, and they all get it for different reasons. Okay. So it's interesting to see how certain designs and certain, as we were saying, like the skulls and the the, the 13 and the uh, horseshoes keep coming back again and again and again. A lot of people want luck for the horseshoe, so they figure that might be a way to get some. Um, <laughs> some of the other, I mean, like mom, is always a popular tattoo. Mom and a heart banner. Okay. It's the things that are tried and true. Right. There for a while, I was doing a lot of people's own names on really? themselves. Huh. And that one never occurred to me. It got to the point where I started asking people, you know, if Alzheimer's ran in the family. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually a pretty good idea. Yeah, it's, um, what was I going to say? Sorry. Every now and then I get slightly distracted. <laughs> if you did have Alzheimer's, though, you wouldn't really know for sure it was your name. Unless you said, my name is. Oh, yeah, my name is. Did they do that? No. <laughs> Still get uh, people getting other people's names on them, significant others. That's actually, I have that. Mm hmm a lot of people think of that as a curse to a relationship. Really? Yep. Hmm. Oh, well, I'm hoping I didn't just curse it. Well, it, this is four years old, so. And your relationship is what, 10, 12? Yeah, 15? 10 years old, so. I had a woman who came in and she was getting her husband's name. I'm like, you really gonna do this? I was questioning her about it. And she's like, yeah, we're, we're in love. We've been together for 10 years. I go, okay, well, if you need to get it covered up, come see me, please. 
The next year, she came and got it covered oh. up. Oh. Oh. Are you able to see this? Pretty yeah. good. Yeah, I got a really good shot of it. Nice. Oh, technology. <laughs> That's a good thing to talk about also is how technology has changed how people shop for tattoos. Okay. Because it used to be you had to have a library full of good reference books to find stuff and now people coming and showing you their phone. Can I get this? Huh. You were saying that the, the, the way people choose tattoos have changed because of the internet. Um, you, before the internet and before there was a lot of uh, mass diffusion of being able to get a tattoo image on demand, have you seen, um, I guess the best way to say this is, has there been a larger diffusion of style now with the internet around and people being able to see different styles not that you wouldn't see them already but well i think it's it's there are more artists okay professional artists who have come into tattooing before it was more of a craft and now there are people who actually know about i mean not that there weren't but there are a lot more of them now and so they're trying to push the envelope in a lot of ways. Bringing different styles to tattooing that people just didn't think of before. So I'm guessing that um, with the advent of the electrical um, tattoo machine, there was a jump in quality. So has there been another jump in quality since I guess you could say the internet indirectly? Uh, I, I would say it's the, the artist, not necessarily the internet. Yeah, okay. Because it is one of the largest growing industries in the country, or at least was a couple of years ago. Um, there, it's so attractive to a lot of people. And you don't have to be a starving artist if you're good at it. And that's kind of an interesting way of, of, of looking at tattoos is they used to be stigmatized. Mm -hmm. um, I know even when I, I got my first tattoo, there was that mindset of if you get a tattoo where you can't cover it up, you're not going to be able to get a job. Mm -hmm. I'd say that hasn't gone away. I mean, in cities, it's more accepted, but right. you move out into the county and to the country, I've had people pull their kids away from me even though I'm walking down the street with my kids wow. because I'm heavily tattooed. So that that still hasn't changed. It's, it's still, there's still a lot of the stigma. Oh, yes. Pockets of it everywhere. Just like everything else bad. <laughs> Surely tattooing isn't bad. I know, but, <laughs> but that it's idea, per from, uh, perception that it's a bad thing still still prevails in some places. Now, do you know where that, I, I guess you could say where that grew out of, because I know in certain cultures across the world, tattoos are a sign of um, all different things, but they're, it's more widely accepted in certain cultures. Mm -hmm. um, almost in some, in some ones, it's, in some cultures, it's a rite of passage. You need, you're supposed to. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you know why in our culture it has gotten such a bad rap? I think it's a generational thing. I think after the war, so many people having so many tattoos 
that, you know, how do you rebel against your parents? You don't do what they do. Okay. And then you take it a step further. And it's just kind of interesting because, and, and at least in my perception, and I could be wrong about this, a lot of people that I knew that had tattoos that were much older than me were all got their tattoos while they were in the military. Mm -hmm. They got them in Vietnam, and in some cases, even as far back as, as, as um, like World War II, some of the much, much older people. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's interesting how, at least I know with World War II, when all those uh, soldiers came back, they were considered the great generation, and they helped build the country, that they, uh, it was still stigmatized, even though they were the ones that were held up as heroes. Yes. I think there is, there were also a bunch of them that did not deal well with coming back from the war and, you know, did not fit in as okay. well. And they probably showed off their tattoos more. Okay. Like a lot of the bike gangs grew out of uh, groups of military people coming back and really? not feeling accepted and wanting to bond. And I, not that I, I, I don't know very much, but I, I definitely have never heard that, that uh, bike gangs came out of um, veterans. That's kind of shocking. <laughs> Now, um, when did you start tattooing? Or I guess I should say, what's your history with tattoos? Uh, I got my first tattoo set up when I was 21. Um, I just got a kit through the mail and came with a book, read the book, and started tattooing my friends. Were you an artist? Uh, beforehand? Like, did you do a lot of drawing? I did do a lot of drawing. I uh, thought I wanted to be a photographer at one point. Um, I was fortunate in that those people are still my friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, my parents also were both artists. My dad's a graphic designer, so I grew up around a bunch of art. Okay. My mom painted. Um, Got that when I was 21 and was fortunate enough to meet a bunch of guys who knew what they were doing and they helped me along the way. And is there, they're like, um, it seems like there's definitely, um, sorry, let me say that again. For it being such stigmatized by groups, it seems like it's a great bonder of people who have tattoos and I can't tell you how many people I just start talking to because they have a good tattoo. Mm -hmm. And it seems like it's a camaraderie between people. It, it's definitely a door opener. And yeah. a lot of people wear what they consider as part of themselves as their tattoos. So, I mean, you can look at it and look, try to gain some insight into that person too, if, if that's the case. I mean, then there's tribal. And yep. So, I mean, reading books by their cover is never good, but... Right. No, it's, it's, it's interesting to me. Um, sorry, I forgot, <laughs> I forgot the shading one feels different than the, <laughs> than the other one. Um, yeah, it's for, yeah, as I was saying, for something so stigmatized, it's amazing how much it pulls people together. Yes. Um, so I guess you could say that about a lot of things, like music. Uh, a lot of, of pockets of music are very stigmatized and you shouldn't, you know, they're considered wrong or bad, but the people who like it all band together. Yes. That's true. And I think one of the, I've seen one of the things floating around on the internet where it's uh, the difference between Tattooed people and non-tattooed people is tattooed people don't care if you have a tattoo. <laughs> so what are you doing now that's different than what you were doing before? 
that was outlining it and now I'm going back in and coloring it in with the shader. This is a wider needle that covers more area faster and will give me the ability to uh, control how I do fades. Is it more painful or just different? Um, it's different. It's just going from one needle to the next. It's, it's, I guess you could say you, you kind of have to get used to it for a few seconds. Um, but now it's fine. It was just that, that initial. Yeah, the initial. Oh, wait, this feels different. <laughs> um, oh, there were more questions I had. <laughs> You're doing an amazing job of concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to do a better job of concentrating, but. Um, when I get tattooed, I. I tried one time to uh, read a book, and I ended up reading the same line over and over again. Did you realize you were doing it? Yes. I put it down quickly. I actually, oddly enough, had a friend that was getting um, their back done, and it was over a few different sessions, because it was a very, very large tattoo. And they said by like the third or fourth session, they had just ended up being able to fall asleep while getting the tattoo. Because they were like marathon, couple hour sessions, and they would just fall asleep. I've had a couple people do it, but it's few and far between. Yeah. Yeah, I thought they were, um, <laughs> did you take something beforehand to make you fall asleep? Because I can't imagine that. So what, other than just, you, you said that you uh, ordered um, a kit, but what actually drew you to tattoos? Uh, well, I had been interested in them before I turned 18, and I think my interest came from the Modern Primitives book up there. Okay. And getting that early on and seeing different cultures and how they did different tattoos in different ways. It, it, piqued my interest and I wanted to know more so and what um what uh sorry <laughs> when you're looking at at all these different cultures and and such what sort of uh um ideas about our a whole world's history can you glean from it is there is can is I guess you could say is the history of our world and our, our, our cultures written on the inks of people's skin? Oh, that's kind of a weird loaded question. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, the, I, I would guess so, but it's, it would also be a skewed history. Okay. Because there are people who go to somebody's house and do bad tattoos. There are people who get demented tattoos. And yeah. I don't know. No okay. So when people come in here, um, either to get a tattoo or to visit the museum, what is it that you want them to pull out of the exhibits you have um, on display? Um, just some understanding of uh, where the design, some of the designs came from, who the people were who started doing a lot of this stuff, and progressing tattooing to an art form more than just a craft. And if somebody was to say, come here, or if they're on the other side of the country, can't come here, what are some of the artists that you suggest that the people look up to see the history, the ones that, that are really good? I would, or important, I should say. Important? I would say yeah. uh, Owen Jensen, Burt Grimm, um, Stony St. Clair, A local Baltimore one would be uh, Dan Higgs. Okay. He doesn't tattoo anymore, 
I don't think, but he did made a huge mark on tattooing, and he's a Baltimore local. Um, Sailor Jerry, of course. I've heard of Sailor Jerry, but I can't place my fingers on how I know Sailor Jerry. Well, there's the rum at this point, too. That's okay. marketed after his name. Um, but he was big. He brought a lot of the Asian influence designs because he was based in Hawaii with the sailors. And so they would go across and they'd come back and he would see their tattoos and try to either mimic or improve upon them. And did, um, was, I, I know you said that they, you know, people would see these tattoos, they bring them back. Was this a big eye opener for a lot of people who didn't leave the country or didn't get to travel because travel wasn't as easy? You know, you couldn't just hop on a plane and, and going back and just go to another country. Was this a, a big exposure for certain people to different cultures, of, you know, and different sorts of art? It could be, it just depends. I don't know if anybody would have looked at it that way back okay. then. It was more just a, a marking on the body to a lot of people. It's kind of um, interesting how with tattoos, not only is there the overarching history of just tattooing in general and the designs, but each person who has a tattoo, it's personal history. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to call a lot of my tattoos mile markers of my life. I think that that's um, something that, at least with a lot of tattoo people, I feel the same way, that it's, it's meaningful for one thing or another. And um, there was a... There's a singer I enjoy, and I'm going to misquote him now, but he has a song where he's talking about all the tattoos, and he says he has a tattoo for every screw-up, or every major screw-up, and a tattoo for every major victory. And, and it was... I think it's an interesting way that to look at tattoos is that they tell, not only tell a the story, or a, a story about our culture, but a story about the person. Mm -hmm. I'd say it's more about the person than the culture. Okay. Unless people are getting like heritage tattoos, like either crests, or we do a lot of uh, Filipino flags. Okay. And things like that. Unless it's, yeah, there's, there's specifically culture-based things, but like, most of the time it's people just trying to express themselves as themselves. And before the uh, electric tattoo machine, what did they actually use? Uh, needles, uh, bones. Um. It was, was it um, always a form of ink or? Did, uh, was there other materials used? Uh, in, I'm not sure in other, I'm sure in other cultures it was, uh, if, the, if they did venture into colors, well I guess, most of the tribal stuff was all black stuff, so that okay. would have just been carbon based. Um, okay. Modern stuff, it has changed depending on the manufacturer of it. Uh, a lot of people have, put out different inks over the years, some good, some bad. Okay, and basically what is, um, what are the inks made of nowadays? What's the contemporary? Uh, well, there are a couple different kinds. There's either mineral-based or plastic-based. Um, different artists tend to stick to one or the other. Okay. Why would you choose one or the other? Ease of use, uh, brightness, uh, Have they uh, made improvements in longevity? Um, not really. I think it's the application that okay. is what improves longevity. A lot of the old guys you see with the 
big blobs. Yeah. That might have been not as sharp a needle or okay. hit the skin too hard or there's so many different factors that it could have been that it's it's hard to say, but back then they didn't have capacitors to regulate the electrical current, so it usually was a lot more all out. Just go. Yep. <laughs> You're next, Jackie. Tattoo? <laughs> 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 I'm wondering how far into the skin does the ink actually go so that over time it doesn't just fluff off with normal... Uh, at under three of the seven layers. If you go too deep, it gets blurry. If you go too shallow, it'll fall out. So one of the things that make a tattoo high quality Clean lines, uh, no uh, solid fill of color, no scarring, um, good composition. Um, now, and this is this is because of my being able to be exposed to it because of the, the internet. But I've noticed that. Even in the last few years, there's been um, a lot of new and interesting styles. Mm -hmm. uh, one of which was the watercolor one. That just and that that probably speaks back to what you were saying about there being more artists now. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like with the while there still is the stigma to certain people, it's it's becoming more widely popular. Or I guess I guess you could say what I don't know how you would say that. I would I would. It seems to me that it's more popular now. Mm -hmm. Um. That With reality uh, TV and everything. Yep. That uh, it's um more acceptable to be a tattoo artist too. Mm -hmm. it, it's. I mean, we get people coming in every day asking for apprenticeships. It's at this point. It's like being a rock star because of the TV and everything else, and it's, it's putting a heavy burden on the, the whole community since not everybody's, more people are trying to do tattoos than get tattoos. Really? I would say it definitely, I mean, when we opened up there were two or three shops okay. in this area, one being Charlie's and then... I think Tux's and Dragon Moon. Okay. And now it's, they're lists of them in the phone book. And they're a lot of good artists and a lot of them should be tattooing. It just, it, there's less of that nut for everybody to grab. Wow, I didn't realize that there was such a, an increase, uh, disproportion or dis, proportional increase between the number of tattoo artists and the number of uh, tattoo canvases, I guess you could say. I mean, I'm not positive about that, but that's what I'm Your noticing. Your perception. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, I mean, if there's somebody that would have an insight, it would probably be a, somebody who has a tattoo artist. Yeah. I'm jumping around a little bit. So, so are there things, I like suppose that I wanted to get a tattoo. Um, is it safe for me randomly to pick out a tattoo parlor or is it an artist or, I mean, what, what kinds of things should a, a person check before they get a tattoo from someone? Uh, I would say check their art out, make sure you like their art, check out their portfolios, make sure they make nice tattoos that you like. Um, check out reputation, I mean ask friends, word of mouth goes a long way. Um, and then go meet the artist. If you don't bond with the person who's going to be hurting you, or you don't feel comfortable with that person who's going to change your life, find somebody else. So is this a life-changing experience? 
<laughs> oh, you're looking at me to answer that. Um, I wasn't looking at you. Oh, <laughs> I personally think it was. Um, the first tattoo I got, I got when I was 21, and I got it on my my back shoulder, and I I saw it as some as again to commemorate something, and oddly enough, it, it, it I never went back. I kept wanting to get more and more tattoos, and I I personally feel like it's a way of not only expressing yourself, but being able to get art out into the world. And it's a unique art project. It's very rarely, everybody has, you know, like this one is, is a commemoration of a, of a historical tattoo, but every, for the most part, every tattoo is at least a little bit different. And, and especially with the shape of your body, it's, it's a unique piece of art that you are sharing with the world. At least that's my opinion. I've, I've never heard of it that way. It's another perspective that is huh. new to me. But you got one you had taken off. No. I thought you said you had something on the other shoulder. Oh, no, I had a mole removed oh, on the other okay. shoulder. No, no, no. I, I do not regret a single one of my tattoos. And actually, I don't regret them because I have a... I have a method. I will get in my head what I want, and then I will wait a year and then get it. This is the only exception, but with me at this point, I like skulls and I want multiple, multiple skull tattoos. So getting a skull is not a, it's not something that I'm gonna go, oh man, why did I get that fourth skull? Should have had a V8. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people also, you know, even if they don't like their decision, at some point when they get the design on them, it becomes part of them. And so, it, I mean, if you don't like part of you, then it's a bit of self-loathing. So hmm. I've seen people with bad tattoos who are walk around so proud and sh pulling their shirt up and proud of it. Huh. And you know, you can't tell them not to be because then can't be proud of yourself. Yeah. Yeah, actually, not to, not to bring up that, that uh, singer again, but he had a, and and, and uh, I don't think it was the same song, it was another song he had about tattoos, he has quite a few. Um, he had a line in there saying, I have a lot of stupid tattoos, but if I had to do it again, I'd do it exactly the same. And I never thought of it that way. <laughs> the thing about it being, people owning a bad tattoo. Mm -hmm. Now this might be a personal question, there are two personal of a question, but do you, do you get pictures of all your tattoos and put them out there so that people can see your personal history? Your, even I'll if they don't know the story, they, can, yeah. A lot of them I do, not all of them. Um, okay. Just depends on the design. If it's something that I hold high and, or not necessarily, I take that back. Okay. <laughs> not that I hold high. If it's, if it's something that I like and I think shows off a aspect of my tattooing, then I'll post it. You have tattoos that are deeply personal to you that you don't want to share with the world. I guess you could if, if they ask not to, then yeah, okay. I won't. I mean, I don't put people's faces in it. Oh, no, I mean you, usually. personally. Oh, me? Because you were saying that there's ones that you would show and then ones you wouldn't show. Um, Did I, oh, that I, I've done? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, I was talking about your, your oh, style. Oh, mine. Yeah. yeah I, I've, I mean, I like all mine, and I'd show all mine off. Okay. I'm sorry, I was... I... I yeah. yeah. I, <laughs> all mine? I, yeah. I mean... I've shown in many places, okay. pulling my shirt up and <laughs> pulling my pant leg up. I'm, I like all my tattoos. The only one that I want to get removed is this rose. Okay. And it's just because it doesn't fit in with, with everything else. But. And why, with your tattoos, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm sure that each one has 
a specific reason, but what drew you to the style? What is, where did that uh, influence come from? Uh, I have approached each one differently. Um, some of them, I've just found an artist that I like their stuff and pick something that I like. Some of them, it's, uh, I have an idea for what I want and I find an artist who I like their style and I think they can execute it that way. Okay. Um, one of them was one of the guys here going, I just made this machine. I want to try it out. You want something stupid and little? I go, sure, I'll get a fish with a hand coming out of the mouth of the fish and then a hook in the hand. <laughs> and so I got a little fish with a hand and a hook. And was that, did, did he make the gun or the, uh, tattoo machine? The tattoo machine? Yep. And is that uh, another aspect of being a tattoo artist where you personalize your own machine? Uh, well, there are a lot of artists who make machines. There are a lot of artists who never made needles and don't make machines. It just depends on if you were apprenticed or if you learned that particular, the, that stuff. If you're around people who knew like the geometry and all that. I know a bunch of tattooers who've never made needles and, you know, before, a while ago, there were no pre-made needles. You had to build all your needles yourself. This, this might be a loaded question. I understand if you don't want to answer it, but with the advent of the ease of getting some of this technology um, and the, um, you said that the pre-made needles, do you think it, it not only opened it up to people who might not have the machine ability, but for or what the tech, I'm just trying to think out this, the technological ability, but they were proficient with an artist. So it opened them, opened them up to be able to do something they wouldn't have been able to do before. Because I, I've read about, about having to put together the needles and it sounds, mm -hmm. I'm sure that if you do it enough, you get good at it, yep. but it doesn't sound like it's the easiest thing in the world. No, but I mean, neither is tattooing. It, 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 I don't think one would detract from the other or give you a better okay. leg up. Um, I have noticed a... Mm, I was going to say a lot. Because of technology, things get outsourced and mass-produced also. Okay. Which can cheapen some of the stuff. Okay. That's kind of an interesting... Um, Thing to think about is that as, as the technology gets better and that it might also be getting made with less care. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there are one of the suppliers sent us a tattoo machine with an order, just tossed it in, and you know, it's not something we would use, huh. but makes a good paperweight. <laughs> Uh, how long have you been collecting um, artifacts, I guess you could say? Uh, since uh, right before I started tattooing, I would go and collect business cards and stickers and uh, flash. Okay. And you have a lot of actually old tattoo machines. Mm -hmm. Some of them are old, some of them are new. It, it's hard to tell just by looking Look at, at them. them. Yep. I guess that speaks to the technology not really needing to change that much, just as you were saying, fine tuning. Mm -hmm. A lot of tattoo artists look back at the classic tattoos to gain inspiration, to learn what makes a good tattoo and what doesn't. Yes. There are a lot that look to that and there are a lot that uh, think that it's antiquated and should be thrown away. Really? It's, it, 
different schools of thought. I mean, just like anything else, um, art is all about your perception of it. So. So there's actually people who think that you should, well, as you said, throw away these these classic designs. Yeah, walk away from them. Don't do that. It's childish. They're so simple, you know, compared hmm. to some of the things that other people do. A little bit more black. No, because um, personally, like, as I said, I've always been drawn to the uh, art side of it. And, and I love um, searching online and, and looking at different artists and, and the different styles. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I have to wonder if... Um, where tattooing is going to go from here because as I said in the last few years it seems like it's been starting to take a jump in a little bit different of a direction with as I said the watercolors and then some of the the ones that I was I was talking with uh, him about was the crack skin ones the mm -hmm. ones that have the the really kind of 3D aspect to mm -hmm. them um do you do you have any inkling on where it can go, where the, the, the ceiling is going to hit? Well, I think the next wave is going to be a, a huge round of uh, figuring out how to do cover-ups on tattoos that were done the wrong way. Okay. Like watercolors are look great, but in 10 years they're not going to be there. Interesting. Um, there's a reason all these old school guys used all the black. It, it stays, it holds in what color you do use, and gives it the contrast, even when the color fades, okay. to make it pop more. When you do the watercolor stuff, it's going to get softer and softer over time, and then it's because you don't have that fence or the contrast, it's just going to look like you have uh, skin blemishes for some of them. So for something that might look great for the first few years, it might not. Yeah, because ink spreads under a skin over time, and so you need to allow for that in your designs. Okay. Usually, I mean, the reason a lot of these designs are simple and open is because they knew that, and that they, they wanted to make sure that when people referred to their tattoo, they could see it looking good, and they'd want to go get tattooed by that person. Okay. So as you were saying before, they didn't want the atypical blob after right. like 20 years, right. which is, I guess is, is, a good, is, is a good reason not to forget about the, the, the yep. history of tattoos and, and these old designs. Um, I guess I sh should ask, um, how long did, did they stay? I guess you could say, how long did they stay with the simple designs uh, in contrast to when it started getting more and more complicated? Um, I think with the internet and people being able to see more, people start getting more ideas and just going from there. Um, before that, it was you go into the tattoo shop, you get pick something off the wall or they're an artist that has a reputation, they draw something up for you. Um, and you would go in with an idea for those people okay. and, or a couple of reference things. I mean, these days people walk in with their telephone and ask us if we can do that. Uh, some of them, not the size that they want them on the screen. <laughs> um, 
a lot mean, of... Oh, sorry. Go uh, on. Go ahead. I oh, know. I was going to say, you mean uh, they don't really want it blown up and have pixels doing a bunch of little squares? I've, I've done some pixelated tattoos. You've done... So I would hope that it was because they, they, they really wanted it, not because they right. said blow this up. Right. And and I'll take whatever it looks like when yep. it's blown up. <laughs> Trace it up. I think Pinterest and Google, huge game changers. But it seems like maybe not necessarily for the better. Um, in some aspects, yes. yes in some aspects, yeah, exactly. no. Yeah, it's a double-edged sword, definitely. I mean, there are people who are always going to tattoo somebody whatever they want on them just so they can get that buck from them. Yep. And just because they do that and put that picture up there on the internet doesn't mean it should be done. So you, as, as a tattoo artist... You're discerning, will you, are you discerning about what you'll do on somebody? Mm-hmm. Yep. It, like, small lettering we won't do just because it'll fill in and turn into a blob. And you might have the quote memorized by then, but still you don't want blobs on you. Yeah, actually, that's, um... Yeah, like your my barcode? Sec, that was the second tattoo I ever got. Yeah. And it's deeply personal, but some people, well, even I... So the eight looks like a six now. <laughs> yeah. And another 10 years, you're not going to nah. be able to tell. Yeah. 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 And it's just, if you don't allow for that growth, then. I mean, I was young at the time, but yet again, I don't regret it yeah. at all. But and the, that, that artist didn't tell you any otherwise, you know, nope. probably. No, nope. it was just, yeah, I can do that. Yep. Give me your money. <laughs> As with an, any industry, I mean, you got all sorts of people in it. For the longest time, tattooing uh, attracted uh, people who were on the fringe of society, people who d didn't want to fit in, but now it's definitely changing. Is there regulation on the tattoo industry? Uh, in the city of Baltimore, we there is. I don't think in the rest of the state there is. We have a, we need to get a, a license and inspected every year. But I'm, I'm not sure about the county. I don't think they do. Is it a health type of regulation? Yep. Health department comes in and checks all our stuff. We've all also taken classes in the prevention of uh, bloodborne pathogens and use universal precautions where we treat everybody like they have everything that way everybody's safe yeah i um i i did a lot of food service before uh you know like in college in high school um and i have to say it's kind of i've been not that i didn't think i've been here before and you guys were amazing before um but it's always nice to see somebody change their gloves after every little tiny thing and not reuse them. Mm -hmm. I know that just and goes... not smoking a cigarette with not, your gloves. Yeah, on. not smoking a cigarette. <laughs> <laughs> or running your hands through your hair with your gloves on. Is, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Now, we're in Fells Point, and this was a shipyard... Was there a, or there was a sailor's port, uh, was this a uh, big, being a, being a sailor's port, was this a big hub for tattoos, tattoos and tattooing? Yes, it was. Uh, down on the block, Charlie's is now the oldest continually running tattoo shop in America. Wow. Um, and there were a lot of pretty famous people. Pinky Yoon was here in Baltimore, and they tattooed a lot of people that came in to port and left out and took a little bit of Baltimore with them. But they, at that point, they were trying to keep it all down by the block. It was all red light okay. district type of thing. Yeah, um, it's, do you know if it, in, in, in this area, it, how far back it went? The tattooing. Uh, in Baltimore? Yeah, Baltimore or Fells Point or 
how far, I'm not really sure. Okay. Um, it starts to get blurry. Not, I, you probably have to do some like city research. Okay. To get that information because a lot of, a lot of people just didn't hold on to that kind of records. But I mean, was it before the electric, uh, the electric machine? machine? Or probably was, not. Probably not. Probably okay. not. So, the electrical machine really brought, for at least in America, a lot of that ease to have for like soldiers or sailors. It, it made it so you could do it faster. So you could, it, it was more of a, you could be a tattooer and do okay. that as a career because you would have a line of people waiting to get tattooed and. Okay. Whereas before, you know, hand poke, if I'm doing this, 3,000 times a second with a machine, that's me, or 3,000 times a minute with a machine, and then comparing that to me poking it by hand, and the accuracy I can get with it. I mean, So it takes some dedication. Yes. <laughs> to if it way, way long ago. There's probably more of a, like a, Mark amongst friends at that point. Okay. So at least in, in, in American culture, the, the rise of the tattoo came with the elect yes. electrical machine. Definitely. We talked about this when the camera was on or not, so I'm just going to ask it again. Um, so you mentioned in like prisons they use cassette tape, or not tape, uh, cassette players. Yes. And uh, what other sorts of machines would people use in the, the past to achieve the same effect? Um. Remote control cars, uh, usually the rheostats from train sets. Okay. Um, I guess I should ask this then. Was you're talking about now how everything is a little is more easier to get, the mm -hmm. technology is more readily available. Um, has there always been places where you could go and buy these? Since the, the, the dawn of them, has there been places where you can go and buy them? Supplies. Supplies. Mm -hmm. Or has it been that these were something that people would make themselves? Initially, it was something you made, but once there are people, I mean, once people started thinking about making money, they started supplying it. If there's a demand, they're going to fill that void. Capitalism, even? Like At its best. <laughs> yep. Uh, a lot of the sheets of flash, while it was, they produced a lot of it, it was just guys who would draw and would either paint it themselves or color it in with colored pencils and sell it. Okay. And then people would trade them and, but that, that was probably the first was selling, selling the flash and everybody does that today. We, I, we have stacks of flash that we've traded with other people with our flash. Wow. That's so it's, it's, it's goes back to that almost community aspect mm -hmm. of, of diffusion. And, uh, and I guess in, in some of these cases it's diffusion through capitalism or diffusion through just artists sharing their work. Mm -hmm. Do people consider that they've got a copyright in their designs? Uh, I wouldn't say copyright, but they don't want them like photocopied. Like they don't want, they want to get paid for it. Okay. Um, we, that's why we try not to let people take pictures of the flash and because they could just take it somewhere else to somebody who didn't give that artist their money for the designs and just scab it and, or hmm. not scab it, but just 
put it on for cheaper or whatever. So will an artist, like if, if I was an artist and I gave you a design, you would pay me every time it was used? No, nope. you... just for the just setup flash. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, there was recently, I know there was Check recently. Check it out. Oh. I should, I want to look at it myself, but I should probably turn to. It's more important for you. Oh, actually, I like it a lot. I'm going to, sorry, Jackie. <laughs> Ooh, that's really cool. That new tattoo feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture of sure. it. Sure. So what does a new tattoo feel like? Um... Well, it's mixed between getting a really bad sunburn and complete joy and elation. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Actually, could you? Yes, indeed. Thank you. Um, you want me to email this to you? Want me to do it with your phone? Um, actually, my phone sucks. Um, I can do that. If, yeah. yeah, I wouldn't mind an email. Okay, let me take a better one. Just okay. hold your arm down nice and natural. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Thank you very much. Mm, one more time. Sure. Yeah, I know recently I heard, well, recently within the last like three years, um, there was some sort of, there was a lawsuit because of the movie Hangover 2 because the person, the artist who did the tattoo on Mike Tyson's face was upset that they reproduced it, um, even though it wasn't a real tattoo, mm -hmm. they reproduced it for the second film on another person's. Yeah, it, uh, I mean, Disney has tried to sue over tattoos also, but it's, you oh. just can't. Really? Yeah, because it, there for a while, Disney designs were really popular. And it, it's, it's, you're making it new, so yeah. it's not the same. Let's see here. There you go. You can type in your oh. email address there. Thank you very much. I'll put a bandage on you. Okay. Oh, there I am. I'm actually already there. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. That was a fun one. And you, you really, you don't mind doing this too? Nope. Thank I just you. need to get a different oh, yeah, needle yeah. out. That one's nice and heavy compared to your lines down there. Um, how do you usually take care of your tattoos? Um, I wash it. Um, actually, it's it's it changed because the um, I can't remember how I took care of this one, mm -hmm. but these I actually was given or I bought like a uh, what's the name some, sort. some sort of solve, mm -hmm. solvent. Um, what's your suggestion? Uh, for... Leave that on for one to three hours. Okay. Take it off and wash it off really good. Okay. I think that's the most important part of the healing process is that initial wash. Okay. I usually recommend 15 to 30 minutes worth of lather it up, rinse it off, lather okay. it up, rinse it off. I just want to make sure it feels like your regular skin and it's not slippery or slimy at all. Okay. Get all the plasma and ointment off. Once you get all that off, pat it dry and leave it alone. Don't put anything on it. Really? Yep. Okay. Tomorrow the next day you can start with a little unscented, uncolored hand lotion. Okay. Lubriderm, Curel, Eucerin, Cetaphil, any okay. of those are really good. Actually my wife is allergic to scents, so we have all of our all of our soap and everything is all scent free and nice. so. um, less is better and more, just make sure you rub it in real good, make sure there's no excess on top. Okay. Don't let the shower hit it directly. Okay. Don't pick it at your scratch it, oh, all yeah. that good stuff. Yeah. If you see any light spots, any unevenness, please okay. come back. I'd be glad to touch up for free. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you... Can you I don't see? Yeah. The hashtags, my goal is to hopefully one day have... A bracelet. A, as long as I live long enough, have a nice large collection of hashtags. All right, so... so I, yeah, one, the one across and then one, one two, two, three. three. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any preference as to which angle you want for the um, diagonal? That way. Okay. If I was going to write it, that probably be how I'd do it.
Now I will admit this one hurts a little bit more, but it's just because the skin is a little bit more tender on that. That and the fact that you were on that side before yeah. and crossing the body meridian. Oh, I never is, even thought of that. <laughs> second piercings and tattoos always are more painful on the other side. <laughs> I honestly don't know if it's an illusion, but when you were doing that, it looked like I could see the needle going in, like, under can. the skin. Uh, you might be able to. It's a little transparent, that's why you yeah. can see the ink, because your skin tone heals over top of whatever we put in you. There you go. Awesome. Thank you very You're much. You're welcome. Let me put a little more on that too. Sure. Cool. Um, while we're here, anybody else have any other questions you can think of that... I was wondering about the making of the needles. Mm -hmm. Can you describe yep. why and how? Uh, they are separate pins that uh, come in different tapers of sharpness and we group them together either in circles in groups of threes, fives, sevens, nines, up to, I think I used a 14 on your arm for an outliner. Okay, so there was 14 needles. Separate needles making the one outline. Um, then for the shaders, they are either set up uh, two layers or one layer and uh, more in a flat pattern so you can cover more area and uh, get fades as you whip out okay um what you said well, obviously because of the capacitor it changes but what's a, what's an average of how many pokes per about three thousand per minute per minute yep. okay Let me get your lift yep. now a lot of the things in here you can kind of tell what they are but this i'm not entirely sure what it is we get more questions about this than anything else. Uh, before the dawn of Xerox, this was how people would enlarge pictures. You would stick the design on the flat screen back here okay. and crank the handle in or out to enlarge or reduce the design. Oh, and then okay. you'd put your tracing paper on top and trace over it. Okay. It was lit up and would project the design up there. That's really cool. Yeah. And then nowadays, you just use a computer to, to make yep. it bigger? Yep, we, we can arc it, we can angle it, you can do anything. It's, it's kind of amazing what yeah. technology can do. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Thank you.